Hey, what's up guys? I'm John Hang, and this week I'm going to show you how I made a do-it-yourself cold brew tower for my office. You got a little bit of a preview of it right there, but I first wanted to explain just where I'm coming from before getting into the details. I've been experimenting with other ways of brewing coffee now. We have a coffee machine at work that makes single servings, but the roaster never changes. It's a name that I don't even remember sometimes, and I drink it nearly every day. For Christmas, I got a French press, and I've used it here and there. Honestly, it's pretty easy to use. Just throw in the grounds, throw in some hot water, and push down on it. But I also don't think that I did enough of my own research. Maybe that simplicity is what's keeping me from liking it. I haven't totally been in love with it, mostly because every time I make coffee, the end bits of it just end up being gritty and nasty. You can see it here, nobody really wants to drink something like that. After a few months of using the French press, I moved on to a Chemex to make some pour over coffee. This way has treated me way better than the French press, but it could still be a little better. It's really time consuming just to make a cup of coffee, and it can be a little finicky at times. Sometimes my paper filters tear, and the coffee grounds fall into the water and make a bad batch. So that's when I started becoming interested in making cold brew. I had seen this Yama cold brew tower before at a sandwich shop downtown, and honestly their cold brew is probably some of the best coffee I'd ever had. Plus, this crazy tower just looks amazing. So then I got to asking myself if I could have one too. How much would I have to spend on it? Would it be worth it? So I got over to Amazon and found my answer. Way more than I ever wanted to spend. Over $400. It is literally so expensive that you can even go on a payment plan for it. For five easy payments of $87 a month. So then I got to thinking, can I make this myself? I deconstructed the tower into its pieces. The top beaker was for holding water. The middle beaker was for holding the coffee grounds. And the bottom beaker was a carafe, or is it carafe? And then there's also this use of spiral thing. So the plan is to buy the middle beaker online. And then for the top and bottom pieces, I'll end up buying those from a thrift store and for the wooden frame I'll get from Walmart. Here's my work dad Clay, and we're going to Home Depot to pick up whatever we can in case there is something available. Okay, Clay, tell my 35 subscribers <laughs> what we're doing today. We are going to Home Depot to see if we can pick up pieces for a do-it-yourself cold brew dripper. Okay, that's, that's, that's a pretty good. Problem. That's a pre we don't have a coffee problem. We, we have, have a coffee. Okay, we have a coffee addiction. So we looked around Home Depot and honestly we didn't find much. Uh, at one point we were just worried about things being food safe. And at that point, nothing was food safe. So after finding nothing useful there, we went next door to Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby! Hobby Lobby had some cool stuff, but honestly, the glass pieces were a little overpriced for this DIY budget cold brew tower. This is filled with coffee. It's just me and my dad today at Target. Son, help me out. So after going to the obvious places, Home Depot, Hobby Lobby, and Target, we couldn't find anything, and I ended up just getting a cold brew from Starbucks. <laughs> After finding nothing useful at the other places, I ended up going to Goodwill a week later with other coworkers. We've made it to Goodwill. Everything there was reasonably priced, and there was a huge selection of what I could choose from. It was looking a lot more promising. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think this is more than big enough because this is our, this is 25 ounces, and I'm only looking for like. <laughs> The last step was going to Walmart to pick up a three-tier shelf to make the wooden frame of our cold brew tower. 
So now is on to finally putting the rubber to the road. I ordered a bunch of things online that you'll see in a second. I got started on the weekend. First up was a set of diamond crusted drill bits for drilling the holes into the glass. I learned this cool technique online about poking a tiny hole into a water bottle to squirt a stream of water onto the spot to keep the bit from getting too hot. It actually worked really well here. The hole is actually so small that it doesn't start flowing until you take the bottle cap off. Next was probably the hardest part of the day, and that was getting the drill bit to actually catch on to the bottom of the glass. I honestly didn't think this was going to work and I just kept failing at it. After about like 20 minutes of frustration, it finally caught on and you can see it here. Once it finally caught on, I knew that we were good to go. Honestly, doing this was really satisfying. Like, I got a really clean cut out of this, and here I am just admiring it. I thought it was just really cool how that one trick that I learned off of YouTube in five minutes worked really well. The next piece of the puzzle was getting this brass fitting onto the glass. You could see earlier that I was sizing up the drill bit and the fitting, and was noticing that the half inch bit was probably too small. With enough force though, this little nipple finally was snug enough to get into the hole. Here I'm doing just a test strip of the nozzle, and this thing's starting to look really good. So here's a quick idea of what I have planned. So what I bought from Walmart is a three-tier shelf that has three sections. So the first shelf I will cut so that the ice can container can sit in there. The second shelf I'll cut so that the ground container can sit in there. And this third shelf I'll probably remove so that I won't have to do any cutting and the coffee can just drip straight through to here. So I'm a member of a makerspace in Richmond named Hack RVA. I took in my three-tiered shelf that I got gotten from Walmart and my plan was to cut U-shaped slots in two of the shelves for the top and middle beaker to sit in. The annoying part was the measuring. And measuring. And measuring. I originally wanted to use the CNC router to get a real clean cut on the wood, but ended up just using the bandsaw instead because it was just easier to set up and use. I know just a little bit of woodworking, but the tiny bit I do know is that you can do these things called relief cuts to relieve stress off the blade when making a weird angle like this half circle I'm trying to make. Otherwise it kind of gets a little sketchy, and by that I mean just a little bit dangerous. After finishing up on the bandsaw, it still didn't look that clean to me. In the end it probably doesn't matter that much, but I ended up going back with a metal rasp to clean it up a little bit. You can see me doing just a test fitting of the glass pieces I have there. Once I was happy enough with how the glass pieces were fitting into the wood, I packed up my stuff and headed to the office for a final assembly. Let's see here. So this would be the top, so the ice water would be in here, and the coffee would be there. And I'm kind of debating whether or not I want to put this last divider in here that would go right here and I'm saying that because I'm not sure if this should be all the way here seems seems like I should just have it fall like that fall about a foot and that would work I think that's okay then I'll go with that. All right, so here it is. It's about three feet tall got the first level here where you put in the ice water, got our little brass fitting thing here that controls the flow of the water, and then this next level is where the coffee grounds would go, and then this last level is where our cold brew goes. So I'm just going to test it out. Some cold water right here, I'm going to dump it in the top. See it going in 
about one drip a second. And there is where our cold brew would go. So you can sort of see how long that would take. <laughs> Alright, cool. You can see how sweaty I am. They turn off the AC on the weekends here. And even though this wasn't that hard to build, it still worked up a huge sweat. So I want to say that this is pretty much done. Tomorrow I'm going to make our first batch and I'll show that in the next video. Um, thanks for watching. I'm um, sorry if this was a really a little bit of a longer video, but hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you like the video, thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see more, subscribe. And if you have any comments or uh, concerns or whatever, uh, leave a comment. Cool. Thank you and bye.